uh, we are going to talk about pointer to functions. I'm not going to go very deep, first of all, because this starts to be a little complicated. And generally speaking, pointer to functions are not super used. Of course, this boils down to the type of code you're writing. But I would say initially, if you are a beginner and if you are watching these kind of videos, you are not going to really use pointers to functions. Anyway, this is just a gentle introduction. I would like you to understand what is going on with pointer to functions and take home the overall ideas, the overall principles. So you know that a function is a symbol that you can call to get uh, some action, right? To perform some, to perform a specific task. For example, the printf. When you call the printf, you would like to see on the terminal something written. And indeed, that's what it is. But functions can be also pointers. So let's read together this line. The only things you can do with a function is to call it or to take its address. So if the name is not followed by the brace, the round brace, well, it means that I don't want the function to be called, but I want something different. Indeed, I want the address of the function. So take a message. If you write the name of the function without the round brace, it means that you want the address. It is kind of similar if you want to the array decay, right? When you use um, the name of the array, it's going to decay to the pointer to the first element. Well, in this case, it's similar if you want. The principle is similar. If you use the name of the function, it's going to, quote unquote, decay into the address to the function. So let's understand better this idea. Here, as you can see, I have my process memory layout. So when you launch your program, you know that the operating system is giving you a space in memory, uh, which has this shape. Now, where in my process memory layout, the function foo, in this case, a stupid function that is returning me the value for two, lives? In the stack, in the heap, where is this function? Well, it turns out that the function lives in the text area. Indeed, the text, also called the code segment, contains the instructions of your program. Instructions are bare bone binaries that are telling to the computer to do something. You don't have to go too deep into this stuff. Or better, if you want, that would be marvelous, but it's low, low level stuff. So the binary of the function foo, the instruction, live in this section in my process memory layout. So if you watch carefully, the printf is trying to print a pointer, you see, from the identifier p. Foo is a function, but I'm not using with the round brace. So you know from before that this is the address of the function foo. So this is the program, my friend, and now we're gonna launch. So I'm gonna compile and now I'm gonna launch, okay? Here it comes, I have this address, which is kind of peculiar, right? It's very different from the kind of address that we get from a variable. Let me explain better. If here I do int and b and b equal 13, and I print the two addresses, okay? So b and p, here I use foo, and here I use the address of and b. So I'm gonna compile and launch. You see, they are very different, very, very different. One is this quote unquote little number, on the contrary, our variable lives here. Now I want to explain you something. To do that, I use the slip function. So include uni std, and here I do a slip uh, 100. Okay. So I want my process to not die, to stay alive, because I want to check this process memory layout. So I'm gonna compile and then just launch with the number percent. So I have the terminal, I can use the terminal, even though the process is running on the background. So enter. Now I check PS. Here immediately you can see the, the addresses, right? The printf has worked. So I say PS, you can see that the process is running. Now I do virtual memory map of the process, and then I pipe this into less. This is just a way to see better what is inside um, the output of the command virtual memory map. Okay, enter. Now with this command, I can see the virtual memory layout, which is this one. Now we have this address, which is this one, 105.30.6f20. Let's see if we can find here. 105.30.30.6f. So here we go from 30 to 105.30.70. So you see that uh, um, the address of a function is here, is in this range. And if you watch carefully, this is the text range. Here 
it is a non-writable region, of course, we cannot change the values inside the text. Here on the contrary, we have this value, 7FF. I already know that this is the stack, of course. So let's search for the stack. As you can see here, maybe is in this range here. 7FEEA0, 7FEEA8. So here I have A8, FD00, FC92C, you see? So I have the variable which lives in this range. So I have one range here. On the contrary, I have the um, function that is living in this range. Okay, so this is low level stuff, technical stuff, but just to give you a glimpse. So this is uh, the abstract view that I um, proposed to you in which we have our function that lives inside this place. Now let's zoom in a little bit. So we have our function foo that lives inside the text segment. And basically this foo is a pointer to instruction zero, if you want, of the function foo. So instruction zero of the function foo has that specific address inside the text segment, you see? To make it clear, if we have more functions, for example, add, subtract, multiply, divide, we are gonna have multiple pointers that are gonna point to the instruction zero of the relative function, you see? That's what it is, my friend. That's what is going on. Now, my friend, <laughs> I have a, a little program to understand this concept of pointer to functions, okay? Given the principle, given the knowledge that you now have, we're gonna understand the, this program. So here, immediately you can see that I have uh, four prototypes, right? For function add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You immediately notice that they all have the same signature. They all have the same prototype because they give me back an integer and they take as an input an integer, okay? Here I have another function that is called performed arithmetic. And this is a special function because it's gonna exploit function pointers. So the function is taking two integers and this strange thing here, you see? This, my friend, is a pointer to a function. It has this way of writing. Essentially, it is almost like a prototype. The only difference is that we have these uh, round braces here. And indeed, when it comes to uh, pointer to functions, the syntax is not very simple. So now look there in my main. I have a declaration of two variables, a and b. And here I want to perform arithmetic. In this case, I want to perform the addition. So I call the function perform arithmetic and I give as an input add. Add is the name of a function, right? Is the name of this function here. I've um, defined add here. This is a very silly function that is returning a plus b. But here I'm able to pass add. That now you know is just the address of the instructions in the text. So it's just an address to the function. So here every time I call perform arithmetic, but with a different pointer, right? Every time I change the pointer to the function. Perform arithmetic only knows that it's gonna receive a function with a specific signature. And that's the important part. The thing is that a pointer has to be consistent if you want to use in this fashion. All the pointers have to be an integer as a return and two integers as an input. So let's try to launch this code and let's watch if it works. So I'm gonna compile. So here I have the sum, which is 10 plus five is equal 15, of course. And the address of the sum function is this one. I have the difference, I, I get five. This is the address of the difference. As you can see, it's fairly close, right? It's fairly close one each other. We have only a gap of 20 in hexadecimal, of course. So it's gonna be a gap of 32 bytes. Here I have the multiplication and here I have the quotient. So the division. Okay, it works. So at the end of the day, the name of a function is just uh, um, an address, a spot in your memory in which you have the relative instructions to achieve the goal of the function itself, right? Here with pointer to functions, we are exploiting this property. I repeat to you that it is important that the signature is the same. Now let's try to change a little bit. I'm gonna do another integer. And this time immediately I get a warning and it's telling, and it's telling me incompatible um, function pointer because you can see that this is another type, right? I have another type of pointer so it's giving me a warning because I have a pointer to function that has another signature respected to the one that the function is able to take. The last thing we have to demystify is a little bit the syntax, which is kind of super tricky of pointers to function. So we go in the, this website, which is gibberish to see, and we're gonna type 
for example, int. And then we are going to do, I don't know, pointer to foo. And then we are going to do int, int. As you can see, I have declare foo as a pointer to function that takes two integers and return an integer. Now, why it is important to use the round braces here? Well, let's try to remove them. This is a prototype, as you can see. We're declaring foo as a function that is returning a pointer to an integer. So that's the problem. On the contrary, if I say, hey, you have to read this together, I'm saying, oh, I see. So this foo is a pointer to a function. Get it? Now, of course, here I have all the, um, the values that I can have. And that's all there is. This is the way by which you can declare a pointer to a function. I want to stress out that I don't use pointers to function uh, very often, but it's useful to know how they work. So I just gave you the overall principle, the overall idea. A uh, function name is just a, a fancy way of uh, talking about uh, an address in memory. I recall to you that all the names, all the variable names, function names are just an abstraction for us to um, read the code. But at the end of the day, we have only numbers. We have only addresses. We have only binary values. All the symbols are just an abstraction for us. Okay, my friend, I think that with this mini course, you have a better understanding of pointers. Hopefully, I really hope. Basically, this is the video I wanted to watch when I started to learn about the C programming language. Of course, there is a lot more to dig, to understand, to practice, because pointers are a tremendous bad beast to tame, but this, I think, is a very good introduction. All right, my friend, thank you for watching. Take care.